Sheffield 57, the sponsor of this webcast, invites you to visit our re condominium residences. with Robin Abrams, Executive Vice President of Lansco Corporation, and we're going to talk about retail on Madison Avenue today. Tell me a little bit about what's happened on Madison Avenues in the past couple of years. The dynamic has changed. Rental rates have escalated. There's very little product available as competition has soared for the available space there is. And so the movement has gone for, further north from the 60s up to the 70s. And give me some ideas of, of what types of uh, stores you're seeing coming in the most. We're seeing a lot of um, the fashion tenants having come up here initially, and now I think that some of the accessories tenants and jewelry tenants um, that cannot find space in the 60s or afford space in the 60s are looking at the 70s as it's become validated. You've mentioned that rents have come very expensive, like the Mark Hotel. To talk a little bit about that. You know, Madison Avenue, um, pretty much begins at 57th Street in, times in, in terms of space for luxury brands. It's a little bit commercial down between 57th to 60th. 60th to 64th is considered very prime, and that's where you have your really high-end um, luxe retailers. And then you go up from the 60s to 72nd, and then again, as we're discussing, 72nd to 79th, which is filling in. What's happened over the past couple of years as things have transitioned and tenants have begun to come further north is that rents in the 60s are $1,200, you know, and even going as high now, one piece has come on the market at $1,400 per square foot. Um, heading up as you go towards the 70s, rents are $800 per square foot. And in this vicinity, probably $600. Um, for a boutique size space. So we've seen rents that have gone up by, you know, 50% in some cases doubled over the past few years. That's incredible. Let's take a look in, guys. Fragments began about 13 years ago down in Soho. Janet Goldman started the company, so she looked for a long time for the right location on Madison. She finally did take a plunge and came up to Madison in the 70s on a block where there is a lot of great co-tenancy. Okay, so Robin, tell us a little bit about the available spaces and what are some of the challenges? Well, Jen, I think just to summarize, as you go down from this, you know, 79th Street in this area where we've been walking, you see in pink a lot of new deals that have been done and not a lot of vacancy because, again, that's been filling in. And if you go further south, um, south of the 72nd Street border, there are some availabilities. As we discuss some of these things in yellow that are highlighted, are spaces that are available where there um, is key money required. So a tenant coming in has to pay money to get the existing tenant out of the space and then either take over their lease or negotiate a new deal with the landlord. We're here outside the Searle store with Faith Hope Consolo, chairman of the retail division of Prudential Douglas Element. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, how are you? Tell us a little bit about the positioning of the store. Well, here we are at 59th and Madison, right across the street from Barney's, Calvin Klein. We have a Cyril's 25,000 foot flagship store, which is the largest specialty store here on the avenue. Now their positioning is a little bit slightly different than let's say somebody a limited versus let's say Hermes. Tell me about their positioning between those two retail giants. Well, the reason Cyril positioned a little south, and that's south of Barney's at 61st, is they wanted to capture a lot of the working women coming from the lower 50s on Madison Avenue that cross 57th Street. And this puts them really in the heart of the shopping area and the 59th Street thoroughfare that goes to Bloomingdale's. Let's, do that. Let's go, guys. Excuse me for saying this, Alice, but you had to pay a, a key, key money to get into the store. Yes, we did. Uh, well, it's uh, only about money. 
You know what? A couple of million dollars to buy this position on Madison Avenue and compete to compete with Armani, Versace, Jimmy Choo. Retail real estate's very competitive here in Manhattan because everybody wants to be here. Really, Madison Avenue, we go from affordable luxury to luxe to uber luxe. So we're standing in front of the Bondo 9 store where you can have a fragrance custom designed for you at $1,200 a bottle. But the important thing about this store is this is a little jewel box. Uh, They have six stores in New York, but this Madison Avenue location, which we got for them a few years ago, is their highest grossing store. They paid about $1,000 a square foot. It's about 500 feet. But what makes Bondo 9 unique is that they custom design a fragrance and they have fragrances named for every neighborhood in New York. So here we are now on Upper Madison. We moved up a few blocks. Um, The rent's getting a little higher here. We're up to about $1,500 per square foot. And these are my pick for Christmas. Oh, my, my. <laughs> those are our diamond skull and crossbone earrings, and those retail for 85000 The Place Vendôme in Paris is millions of dollars of key money. Madison Avenue is thousands of dollars per square foot. But do you have to be on Madison Avenue? At this point in time, it is the leading street for luxury and for all the high jewelers. That's why everyone's flocking to Madison Avenue. We have two floors. Two floors. We, have, we have the main selling floor and then we have VIP on the second oh. level. Our VIP area. How so you can see. Go ahead, Oh my God. I think that selling jewelry of this caliber, it's very important to have this type of environment for the clients to be able to come and relax and have a glass of champagne and look at their jewels in the comfort of our VIP area. A month ago, Jennifer asked me whether the prime market or what was happening in the housing market was affecting the luxury market or shopping in New York. Have you seen any? So far, no. We've we've found that our customers are rather uh, (laughs) recession-proof. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you.